Hey crafter, welcome to my channel, Craft is Autonomous. It is Amanda here. Make sure that you hit that subscribe button if you are not already following me. So today I am super excited for this video. I'm going to be bringing you five dollar store summer decor DIY ideas for under five dollars. This video was a fun like challenge for me because I've done dollar store DIYs in the past, but it's usually for things like a vacation Bible school. And with that, you go a lot more, you know, exaggerated and bright colors, but trying to make usable decor out of things found at the dollar store is a little more challenging. So two quick notes before we get into the projects I'm gonna show you today. First of all, I don't really talk about paint in the video and that's because I just use paint that I already had on hand. But if you wanna get paint, what I always use is just the little two ounce containers of acrylic paint that Walmart carries, it's Apple Barrel brand. They're 50 cents a piece, you really can't beat that. So that's the paint I use all throughout the video. The second thing is if you like the project idea but you're not actually a fan of the colors I use, you can totally change it up and use whatever colors you want to get the look you are going for. The dollar store had a great selection of colors for many of the items. And of course, just by changing the paint color, you can get a totally different look. All right, let's get to DIYing. For our first project, the materials we need from the dollar store are napkins, Elmer's glue, and this little glass dish. Also, I scored because they wrapped mine in the funnies. So we're gonna start by cleaning out the glass dish. I pulled the sticker off the bottom and used Goo Gone to get the goo residue off. And then we're going to put the napkin around the dish. So you could, as I was showing a moment ago, just fold the whole thing up around the dish, but that will create some overlap. So what I like to do is I like to cut out the pictures from my napkins. And you wanna make sure that you pull apart the layers of the napkin. Sometimes it's easier to start cutting and then you'll be able to pull the layers apart. So we're gonna mix up some Mod Podge, essentially we're gonna put a little bit of Elmer's glue into a cup, add some water, and stir it up. I do about a one-to-one -one ratio. Then I'm using this foam brush and I'm putting it onto the glass dish, and then I am just adding my pieces of napkin onto there and just pressing them down. You can use your fingers or you can use the foam brush. And we're just gonna keep layering this up. Now at the top, I was thinking that I would just leave it standing up and then cut it off, but I kind of wish that I had just Mod Podged it and folded it under like to the inside, but if you do fold it to the inside, it will be kind of double layered and will look a little different. So once it dried, I cut off that edge at the top and then there's lots of ways we can get decorate with this. You can also pick up some rocks from the Dollar Tree and you can put those in the bottom, put a little tea light in there, a little candle. It looks super cute. I really like the way this idea looks. I love the way the light comes through the napkin. Another idea is I have some extra netting from another project I'm gonna show you in this video. Again, the net came from the Dollar Tree and you can use the net to hang up the dish. Just make sure if you use the net that you use an artificial light, not an actual flame because then it could burn the net and then drop your dish. My absolute favorite way though is to put a little bit of water in the bottom of the dish and then float the tea candle in there. It looks so cute, especially at night or in a bathroom. Super adorable, super summery. For our second idea, we are going to do an upgrade to a picture frame, and I'm gonna be honest with you, this one was a little bit rough, not gonna lie. The basic idea is we are going to take our picture frame, paint it, and then we're gonna put something inside of it. Now, what you put inside of it is totally up to you. So since I'm using this paper, it doesn't look super summery, but if you wanna make this really summery, what you do is you pick a summer-themed green card or a summer-themed gift bag from the dollar store, and you just cut that to size. So I cut my piece out and then I wasn't quite sure how I wanted to stack everything. So I played around with a couple different things and finally settled on like this green backdrop, cut out my little picture, my little saying, and then I'm gonna glue it all together. So I just glued the green paper onto the back of my frame. Then I marked where that inside border piece is gonna be. So that way I made sure I was inside the border piece, glued on my little sign, erased my pencil marks, and then I liked the way it looks. Now I did want to change up my color scheme because I felt like the white was too bleh and I wanted to go with black to make it just really pop. So I just painted it with some acrylic paint. Super easy tip is the first time to kind of sponge it on there so it's kind of textured and then the second time just do it with streaks and that kind of minimizes the paint streak look. So then the frame, the frame was kind of a struggle and I kept going back and forth on how I wanted to do this. What I tried at first was this blue paint. Now, another quick note, while I'm painting, the surface I'm painting on this table, I'm able to wipe the paint off as you see here. But if you need to put something down, don't like just be messy to be messy. I was only being messy because 
I knew that it would come off my table. So anyways, this is a frame. I painted it blue, or two coats of that, and then I took some white paint and mixed just a little bit of brown in there, and then I used kind of a coarse brush, and I put just a little bit of paint onto my brush and then dry brushed it onto the frame to give it that weather look. But once I was dry brushing the brown onto the blue, it looked kind of orange and I didn't like the way it looked with the green and with the colors. So then I changed it up and I painted the frame completely white and I still wasn't a huge fan of that. So then I grabbed my metallic gold Sharpie and I was like, let's try doing this little design on the side. And then I didn't like that, so I was like, maybe we'll make it zigzags. And I didn't like that either, so I ended up just using my Sharpie to cover in the front edge. But I actually really like this with covering it with just the front edge with the Sharpie because you still see a little bit of the white at the edges and of course on the sides of the frame. So it just adds a little more texture and shine and sparkle. I love this, I've got it up on top of the desk next to some other pictures and my paint tour that I did. Super cute, super easy. Okay, this one is probably my favorite, but you're going to see that this project went way downhill and then I kind of pulled it up and made it work. So first of all, I was going to do stripes. I was going to do purple and green and have a stripe in the middle. So I taped it off and did a couple coats of my purple paint. And since I also painted the top edge when I let it dry, I stood it on some of my little paint tubes. Now I wasn't thinking when I picked my colors because I was like, oh, I'll do this cute like purple and green, but my green ended up not being as deep and vivid as I wanted. I went through the effort of filling in even the little gaps and crevices, and then I removed the tape, and y'all, it looked like freaking Barney. So obviously that was not the look I was going for. So at that point I pulled the hair dryer out to dry it faster, and then I just coated the sides completely purple and did yellow on the end. So that looked a little bit better. Next, I wanted to add some words on the side of my boxes and I made mine say grow wild. You can do this however you want. If you're artsy, you can just freehand it like I did with pencil or if you've got like one of those Cricut things. I think a Cricut makes stencils. I don't actually know what Cricuts do. I think that's what they do. Anyways, what I did was I first wrote my word in pencil, got it looking the way I wanted in pencil, then traced it with Sharpie. Then to really take it to the next level, wherever my letters are curved, I just thickened up the font there and that creates this kind of like, I don't know, like calligraphy font kind of look. Super cute. So then I also picked up from the Dollar Tree, I picked up this foam block, it was just a dollar, and I just hacked it in half and you will get the like styrofoam fuzz everywhere, but they fit perfectly just at the right height inside of the boxes. So then I also picked up a bag of this moss and I was gonna use it for a different project but then I ended up using it for this one. I just did the moss with my hot glue attached it around the front and side edges because that's all you really see. If you're gonna put it somewhere lower where you can see it, you may want to cover it more with moss but I was just going for what was actually seen. Now I forgot to film showing you all my pieces but I bought these white carnations as my base and I also bought some pink and yellow accents. So I first started by cutting off each of my individual flowers and then I cut them down to size and I stuck them into my foam block, made sure it looked good. I needed to fill in with some more moss in a couple spots and I pushed them in at different depths just to give them different heights and textures. And of course you can see through the little handles on the side, you can see the styrofoam but no one's really going to notice that so I just left it. Also shout out to Dollar Tree Quality Control, you know they left the little, the little stitching on the leaf there. So, but with my accent colors here, what I did was I cut off the excess like pieces because there were like, you know, two or three flowers at the end. So I cut them off and then with the ones I cut off, I attached them to the long ends of the pieces from like the white flowers. I don't know if this is making sense. You guys can see what I'm doing in the video and I hot glued them together. If you don't want to go the hot glue route, you can just use masking tape and then color the tape in with a green Sharpie. So once I got those all prepped, I just pressed them into my styrofoam block, filled in the gaps, and y'all, I think this looks so cute. This looks a little bit kind of spring, but again, as I said at the beginning of the video, if you change up your colors, you can get a totally different look and make it more summery, more spring, more fall, however you want this to be. They actually had a really great selection and I was really happy with how this project turned out. Okay, now this project, I'm calling this the mantle shelf decor. Basically, I bought a wreath frame, some burlap, some decorative mesh, moss, and pink flowers, and I was like, we're gonna throw together a wreath. Okay, the wreath totally bombed, it was terrible. I didn't have enough materials to cover it all in, and I was just kind of playing around. So then I said, hey, let's cut up the wreath frame, and I cut the wreath frame kind of into two sections, and I'm just gonna use the inner section, and I'll save the outer section to make a wreath in the future. 
but I cut it open, cut off the edges, and then I bent it straight, and we're gonna have like a straight frame that's gonna sit like on a mantle or a shelf. Also, I forgot to cut off some of the nubs at the end. Make sure you cut off all the wire pieces. So then I took my purple mesh, again, you can use whatever color you want, and I wrapped it around. I kind of went up and then through and then down and then up through and then up and then up through. I just kind of wrap it. You can wrap it however you want, really. Super simple, just kind of make it fluffy looking. And then once I got that fastened, I tied my burlap at one end and wrapped it around, tied off the other end. So then I cut out my flowers, and also when you buy flowers from the Dollar Tree or really wherever, always make sure that you pick a flower stem that has like all the flowers on there and that it's not missing any, because the one I grabbed was missing the flowers, so I kind of lost out. So first I stuck my flowers in there just for positioning, and then I made this cute bow where you just fold it back and forth, create these loops, and then you crisscross the pieces. Now, when I crisscrossed them there, I messed up because I should have gone like one to the right and then the left one to the left but I didn't quite do it right, so I had to retie it. But basically I just tied it into this little burlap knot. I cut the ends off so that way they were like kind of like pointy. And then this was wire edged burlap, so I pulled out a piece of wire from a piece I cut off and used the wire to attach the burlap to my frame. So now that I knew that everything was where I wanted it to be with my flowers, I just took them and twisted the stem around the frame. You could also opt to just pop the flower off the stem and just hot glue it in place. That's just how I went with it. Okay, quick bonus idea is with all these leaves, because I pulled them off for this one, if you stack them onto a piece of stem, it looks kind of like, like a cornflower plant and you could even stick a flower on top. Super cute. Anyways, I just ended up gluing this flower back on because it fell off, but this turned out super cute. This will look nice on a mantle. I kind of would envision this if you have a shelf above like the back of your toilet that it would look really cute there. And this one turned out a lot more springy than I wanted. Not quite as summery, but again, just change up the colors. Okay, this last one is also one of my favorites. Turned out super cute. So I picked up these two watermelon signs from the dollar store and they had glitter everywhere and I pulled out the little hanging pieces with the rope. So to deal with the glitter, because that's going to be the back side, you can either sand it off or you can take your Elmer's glue and water mixture and just slather it onto there. So I did a really thick coat of it, but once the glue dries, the glitter will not come off. It's great. So I set them out in the sun to dry. Once they finished drying, I brought them in and I made holes to hang it at the top. Now you can use a drill or you can do what I'm doing where I just use a screw and an X-Acto knife and just kind of run the screw through there. A drill would be so much easier. I was just going with what I had on hand. So we created holes at the top. So again, this is the back side by the way, just in case that wasn't clear. So I took some brown paint and I painted them brown. And at this point it was really looking like a hamburger so I was getting a little concerned if this project was gonna turn out right or not. But then I kept, you know, going with it and things worked out okay. So I took a little bit of white paint and kind of like we did with the picture frame on my first try with that, I just did a dry brush technique to create that weathered kind of wood look. So then here is my fishnet. And this again came from the Dollar Tree, just a dollar. And it looks like this. I cut off a piece of it about how much I think I would need. And then I took some more of my white paint and I painted onto the fishnet. Again, I'm getting it all over the table. Don't do that unless you know your surface will clean up. So then I put that out in the sun to dry. Okay, so again, here we are. I'm going to put words on this. I'm gonna make my sign say beach vibes. If you're not super artsy, you can of course get a stencil or if you have like one of those cricket things, totally up to you. I just freehanded it. A tip for freehanding is start with your middle letter and also draw like a top line and a bottom line so your letters all line up. Once I got my letters traced out though, I just took some gray paint and filled them in. And I did a couple coats of gray paint, let that dry. Then I gathered some seashells that I've had over the years from going to the beach. And I took some of my gray paint and just added it onto the shells. And then I also took this bright blue paint and I put it onto the shells as well. I just kind of streaked it on there, super cute. So then with my letters, once those were dry, I was going to kind of create a shadow effect just using the Sharpie. I wasn't a fan of how that looked, so I swapped over to just totally outlining the letters and the B, the part of it was just a really thick border, but that's just how it turned out. I was okay with that. So then I took my rope from the signs that I first took off and I ran them through the bottom one and then up through the top, put both of them through and then I sized it down, flipped the whole thing over, tied knots in the back to make sure it was the right size. And actually I ended up making them closer together because when they were super far apart, they still looked like hamburgers. So I ended up shortening it later on. 
So I had another piece of rope from another project that I ran through the top, had to use a needle for that. But I just tie that onto the top, pretty basic. And then I used my hot glue gun to attach the seashells that I had painted. I like doing the hot glue because it's fast and it holds really well. You could of course use the Elmer's glue if you don't want to use hot glue or you could buy a glue like E6000. So once my shells were attached, I took my fishnet and I spread it across the front of it, kind of where I wanted it to go. And then I just put a couple dots of hot glue along the top and the side, folded it to the back. And when you do this, you want to keep lifting up your sign to see how everything hangs. So that way you can make sure you glue it well. I also pulled some of the net behind it and hot glued it to the back and I adjusted it and put it into place, added some more paint to my shells. And y'all, this looks so cute. I love the way this sign turned out. Super easy, just kind of throw it together. The beauty is in the details, but it just is this nice weathered beach look. So there you have it. These are $5 store summer decor DIYs for under $5. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know I had a lot of fun. It was kind of a learning experience for me too when I was making this video. But let me know if you're going to try any of these ideas and let me know which projects you think turned out awesome, which ones you loved, and which ones you were like, yeah, that didn't quite turn out the way you were hoping. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the projects. Make sure that you guys hit the thumbs up on this video, subscribe to my channel, and make sure you keep an eye out for more content. Thanks so much for watching and happy crafting.